This week in comic books in the land of DC, Pokan Joe learned what FaZe Clan was. And I couldn't be more uh, underwhelmed, to be quite honest. It was kind of, I don't know what to say. Over in the land of Marvel, uh, oh, Dark Ages ended. And it, I, I liked it. I, I have a few little nuances I'm going to pick apart, so that's going to be an overall review. And in the land of Independence, uh, Astro City came out. And boy, I wish it really didn't. That and some comic books I actually liked. Like a lot of good stuff came out too. So let's roll that intro. Hey, what's going on, you wonderful weirdos? It's Pokan Joe, and as always, you're super cool for coming by. Appreciate having you here. Uh, so we're going to talk about this week's comic books, and I want to dive right into it. Because we got some things happening in the community I want to make you aware of, too. So we're diving right into it. Let's talk about Wayne, uh, Batman Beyond the White Knight. So I don't have much knowledge of Batman Beyond as the, the animated series or the comic book. It um, wasn't something I was particularly interested in. But I did kind of get the origin story. Apparently, the guy who's Batman Beyond is a thief, right? I'm assuming they've kept that natural in here, even though this is an world type of book. But we kind of get this kind of nifty little scene of what it would be like if Bruce Wayne was in jail. Remember in White Knight, he got sent to jail, right? So he gets sent to jail, put all of his money out there to make all the good stuff happen. None of the good stuff happened. They basically just militarized the police into armored Batman at that point, right? And I uh, I don't know about that feeling of it, but apparently Bruce Wayne's pretty much running the prison at this point, right? Like, he's doing his thing. Um... We get another Jason Todd whiny moment in here where it was, well, you could have done better. And I'm, I'll be honest with you. What is it, like, oh, that 12 Batman titles out there now, right? Like, six of them are dealing with this Jason Todd thing, constantly whining about how he wasn't a good father figure. And yeah, you know, sorry. Not, not everybody gets to be the orphan right? raised by a millionaire they didn't care about. I guess he just needs a hug. I, I don't know. That was kind of disrupting in the book. I, I didn't really think it was necessary. Also, we see Harley Quinn's uh, kids. Remember, she had the twins. We kind of see what they're like. One's more like, you know, a normal kid, and the other one's very goth and very Harley Quinnish, if you will, only a goth version of it, right? And the reference gets made, you know, you know, we had daddies, right? Bruce Wayne and, and of course, the Joker in this one. Also, the Joker apparently makes a reappearance or Jack Napier. I'm not sure because it's a personality thing, right? It could go either way. Which one is he? Did he, did Jack Napier accept the fact that he's just a bad guy? Is he still the whiny little, oh, I didn't mean to do so much bad. I hope not. But, um, I remember dropping white Knight cause I was getting a little annoyed with the storyline in it. And, uh, I don't see this going very far, but I am kind of curious cause I want to know more about, uh, Batman Beyond. So uh, I don't know if this is a direct relation to it. Maybe you could help me in the chat if it seems like it's going that route or if it's just completely gone in another path and you're like, if you want to know about Batman Beyond, you do not read this, then I guess I'm going to have to break down and buy that issue number one. Oh, it's so expensive right now for no reason. All right, <laughs> moving on. So FaZe Clan. I've been made aware of esports. I know there's professional gamers out there, live streamers, the whole nine yards. I, I understand that's a thing. I did not know, however, that they've legitimately built like companies around these things, like legit firms, right? Um, so Face Clan is one of them. This does not really read like a comic book. It, this reads more like a promotional. Right, if you remember the old promotionals from back in the day, where the story was super simplistic, super easy, but you know you can just keep pushing that product forward. That's what this kind of came off to me, and that was before closing the comic book after reading it and looking up what a Face Clan was. I thought I was, I honestly, I thought it was like a new superhero team. I had no idea, and then I was like, oh, they're they're gamers. These are people. Okay, got it. They didn't kind of really but at reading it i thought it was just a bunch of twitch streamers that they just found cool and just wanted to throw them in a comic book and they know it was like a company um again story super simplistic it's not nothing complicated all the bad guys get foiled really quickly we throw in a rogues gallery of uh, you know the joker of course because you got to have him in there 
and uh, Riddler and, and all these other characters, right? It doesn't really matter because it, it could have been any character out there. And, you know, Batman is just a boomer. It doesn't understand gaming, so they need to get these guys into the game because that's a thing and, and, and defeat the Riddler's overall plan here. It's a promotional. <laughs> it's so promo. Like, I'm not even sure what... The, well, every other advertisement in here is something gaming from their phase shop. So, apparently, they're launching product, swag-type stuff. And this was a super easy way to dish that out there. But, again, just another eSports company um, looking to make themselves popular, I guess, through comic books. Good on you, for two. Smart business decision. All right, next, we got, uh, we go into Marvel. Yeah, those were my only two DCs this week. We go into Iron Fist. I'm finding, finding this book odd. So, the main preface of this story, I was led to believe in issue one, was that he had to go out and get all the shards of this sword, right? Swordmaster here is the new Iron Fist. And some people in Kung Lao have a problem with this because he's an outsider, Right? Uh, but he's going around getting all these shards or whatever, and he's got a little, I don't want to say sidekick. I'm pretty sure that would be offensive to this case, but a female, May, who kind of travels around with him and stuff. And uh, apparently he picks up all the shards in the second one, so that's not the main precedent of the story. So then I was thinking back to issue one, I was like, well, maybe Danny Rand will kind of take this guy and, and mentor him, you know, as the new Iron Fist. Maybe that's the thing. Well, all he did in this book was complain about how, how he's feeling back pains because he's getting older. Right? All of our superheroes are getting older now. They make sure they put that out in a comic book. So I'm like, what do you keep trying to tell me? And then we get this get-along gang here. that uh, Some of the most least intimidating people I've seen in a comic book who feel that it's their right or his right to be the, the Iron Fist. And, uh, of course, that gets dispatched pretty quickly. And I'm like, what is the point of this? What are you trying to show me here? Oh, his brother's trying to unlock some demon gate. You know, that's not a main thing. You know what the main thing in here is? Was the montage of two females that will never be the Iron Fist, right? Because some law, even though there was a past Iron Fist pirate queen, to, to, to montage him to get stronger, better, and faster, and make him sword master again. Why? Why? And what is this incessant need with just us as a species that you don't have any experience in anything and you become the you should have person? You know, you should, blah, 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 even though I have no experience in this, but I have a great idea. I'm, I'm not sure why people always feel like that needs to happen, but that happened in the comic book, right? And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. It you're not going to be an Iron Fist. You haven't been chosen to be an Iron Fist. But rather you think that's right or wrong is irrelevant. It doesn't mean you become the you should to the person that is. Right? That doesn't make any sense to me. But that's what's happening in this book. Um, all the men are, are just horrible villains. There's nothing entertaining about them. And any of the superheroes that are male, they're just complaining and whining it, it's weird and then like all the women are going to show the guy and not, i'm not and let me be clear on this next part i'm not saying a woman can't teach a man anything i'm not saying that it just seems like you would want an iron fist to show you how to be an iron fist especially if you did it halfway decent or if your villains truly think that it's by right divine that they should be the iron fist then you know I don't know, maybe make them intimidating to some degree. Like, where's, oh, where's the viciousness in this? And it's just not there. And it can be very well said that uh, maybe this book wasn't written for me. Well, then by all means, dictate to me who this book is written for. Get, give me a personality profile of who this book is for. Because uh, the, the book's not written for you. It is not, that's not a thing. That, that That's empty phrasing because... Now the question is, well, who is it written for? And then you sit there and you suck your thumb and make up a bunch of stuff. That's, that's horrible. That's my rant. Let's move on to the next book. <laughs> okay. Next, Hulk number five. Man, just went in a completely, just the wrong direction. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I hate every comic book out there. Like, I was on board with this because I thought they were going to do something and they didn't do it. So shame on me for having expectations on something I can't control. Right? That's... That's on me. Uh, I, 
I own that. They're doubling down on this whole Oppenheimer thing. If you don't know who Oppenheimer is, he's one of the people on the project of making the atom bomb. And he was famous for saying, you know, I, I destroy a world's now. And he actually got very depressed after making, um, the, well, he didn't make the bomb. He did the research that concluded that the bomb could be made. And, of course, it was made into a bomb, right? Sometimes the research you do doesn't get used for the thing you want to use it for. He was actually researching energy and how to make energy more efficient. Doesn't get more efficient than a bomb in some cases, but regardless, you know, that's what happens. So they're doubling down on this with this other world, Bruce Wayne, and the world that he lives in. Ross is just absolutely the worst type of patriot you could possibly think of in this. Um, but we also find out that in this particular world, Ross has been gathering some of these gamma mutants right if you will and he's been using them as weapons and that's obviously a problem now well who we thought was betty ross in this and we thought it was a hallucination of betty ross comes find out it's not so much a hallucination nor is it betty ross it's something else maybe his dad or something subconscious who knows at this point but she, while battling all the abominations that came to attack this particular Hulk, she cranks the, the anger meter, <laughs> it's so funny, up to a level 9, whatever that means, right? And apparently the explosion of rage happens, right? I, I don't, I, man, I was so hoping that this was going to go down more into the conscious, subconscious, and physical being of a person, how the three interact. You had a good opportunity to explain motion versus the logical mind versus the physical body. Like you could have done a whole Freudian thing on this and just rolled down the or whole Ayn Rand thing and just totally drove that train straight to the bank, conceptualizing the whole process of the human mind. Nope, we're just going to... We're doing this. We're just going to do this because I don't know. I, I don't know. And again, I don't, I don't want to beat up. Hey, maybe it wasn't written for me. Right? That's that's like the claim this week. Maybe it wasn't written for me. I'm putting that in the title on the thumbnail. All right, next, Dark Ages. Loved Dark Ages. I loved this whole take the most effective use of something, electricity, and take it away. And now you're faced with the problem. Figure it out. And they did. They did. The team did great. And it kind of had a little vicious ending. So Apocalypse uh, loses control. Well, he doesn't. Purple Man, who's controlling half of our superheroes at this point. Good superheroes come. They fight it out. Deadpool just whips out his gun and just shoots the Purple Man, Kilgrave, in the head. It was the most, it was very Deadpoolish, if you will. And it drops. So all the superheroes combine together to go after Apocalypse. But truth is, you just need to store them. Who lobotomized. Right? Put a little force field around the frontal lobe of Apocalypse Brain. And uh, Dracula came and bit him and made him a vampire. Now that he's a vampire, that means he can die. And Blade proved that when he came over and separated body and head. And got Dracula too, which was weird. This was all the subplan of Doctor Doom, of course. I liked it. Big nitpicks out of the whole series, right? Um, this whole taking away power, there's a portal. It's acting as an EMP device, right? But Storm can go around and still make lightning. Remember, you can't create or destroy energy. It can only be changed and manipulated. So if she's able to make electric, right, you can, like, you could do a thing, right? All the scientists that figured out how to make something safe to go down to the portal of the earth or portal from back and forth, you know, physically science stuff, right? If you have people that can do magnetism and people that can generate electrical storms, you can, that's a Faraday cage. You can just make a Faraday cage and put all your electronics in it. That's a thing. You can do that. But comic book woo-woo, right? And it was such a great story. That's just baseline science stuff. I shouldn't even be thinking about it. But I it just little things like that stick out to me. All in all, I enjoyed this series. It's actually much like War of the Worlds to me. I'm going to be keeping the entire series. Because I may want to come back and revisit that later. All right. Moving on, Ghost Rider. So, Johnny Blaze has to find himself and figure out who he is, right? We're into issue two on this. Great cover, by the way. What what about that cover? And uh, the separation of him and, and, and the Ghost Rider in this. Um, so, we find ourselves in a hotel of hell. 
Apparently the manager is going around capturing bodies to feed to a demon that he, apparently he worships or has some sort of affection to. Um, and of course Johnny Blaze ends up there and he's just trying to clean the place and you know make a little extra scratch because he's basically hitchhiking at this point once he got out of the fake city thing um, and trying to figure out who he is. There was a couple of points in here I really wanted to point out. One, his depiction of, of an engine and a human uh, very much in line. I, I very much agree with this. He mentions in here that he can go and ask for help. The truth is, none of these people ever called him to check in on him to begin with. So going around begging for help just doesn't make sense to him. I, I am that type of person myself. I, It's a fault and a strength at the same time for me. It, it really is. And I kind of got that. But I love the, the, the breakdown of you know, when an engine sees up or the piston sees up in a, in a motorcycle engine or any engine, right? It's best to just let it sit for a while and let the oils kind of lubricate everything so you can break free all the gunk and everything, right? You, you should kind of do this as a person, too. Every now and then just kind of think about what's going on, sit, you know, don't go rushing for help, don't go bugging other people. Really fully understand the gravity of a situation before you crank that key again. Man, I love the way that just got worked in there. Boom. I'm thumbs up in my own video. That was good. Right? <laughs> um, another one in here is I want to point out, yeah, I love this, uh, the, the, the concept of vengeance in this one, right? Because vengeance and justice are not the same thing. They're two different things. With vengeance, there's no sense of fair play or equality to happen at the end of it. It is nothing more than the reaction to something that is perceived as wrong, right? So this whole idea of vengeance and the way it's being used in here, I really like it. And penance, I really like it. I think it's more realistic to the actual verbiage than, say, uh, just saying I'm, I'm, I'm vengeance and then treating it like it's justice. It's not. They're two different things. Very well defined. Um, so yeah, I really like this. Some of you may even remember on your SATs, I distinctly remember in, in the early 90s, one of the questions being as justice is the equivalent of fair play, vengeance would be the equivalent of. Like that was a question on an SAT. So yeah, just good stuff. I like this. We'll be picking up some more of that. Next, we got uh, Spider-Man. All right, so no little rant, but not a lot of books. So we should be about the same time we normally are. All right, here's why I don't like clone stories. There's always this sense of agency on the clone, right? Uh, it should be its own person, you know, it should, it should have the same memories and all this other stuff. But the problem with the clone story is, is that the clone always demands from the original, forgetting that the original has its own agency too. It doesn't have an, any obligation to you whatsoever. Also, another problem that I have with this is, I don't, if you don't, if you haven't read it, uh, Ben Ra, or Ben, in this one, has um, lost his memories and wants them back and needs uh, Spider-Man to put on a MacGuffin hat so he can get his memories back, right? Uh, Spider-Man doesn't want to do that, and, and, for, and rightfully so, right? They, they don't need to be the same person. And plus, they've been separated long enough now where... I would be more concerned about the original memories that you've created versus the ones that you just want from somebody else that you're a copy of. And in this, they mentioned the term agency, and I was like, man, how one-sided is this, right? Ben Rowley needs his own agency. Well, so does Peter Parker. And to demand something from somebody else that you're not uh, obligated to give away in any way, that why do two of them need to exist and have the same memories? Go create new memories or focus on the memories that you lost that are probably more important to you than somebody else's memories. And this is why my big hang-up when it comes to these type of clone stories, clone saga, and all this other stuff. I don't see the clone as a, 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 a an equal to the other. It, it should be its own thing. It should exist on its own and go create its own memories. So taking those memories away was a great way. But I do love the fact that we got a new character in here. Ben Rowley's going to be transformed into something else finally and hopefully made original instead of just a copy, blonde-headed copycat. Like, blah, who cares? I want to see this thing, and it seems like they're going to go down the villain route. I don't know. 
some cool things happening here. Most of it's very confusing. Two Spider-Man and Spider-Man suits rumbling around. You don't know which one's really saying what. But the transformation uh, of Ben in this, I, I, I find interesting. So I'm kind of curious what it's going to go into and what kind of psychological stuff they're going to throw into that. Because that's just ready to be a nightmare. And I'm on board with that. Alright, last but not least, Astro City. If you don't remember Astro City, I want to say the first... Uh, Astro City came out like in 1995 and it was I didn't read much of it I think I read like two issues of it uh, I was in, just joining the army at the time so cotton books really weren't that important to me um, this is a coming of age story in the most awkward way possible basically we pick up the story from 1969 where a bunch of superheroes are about to turn 18 and be adults and their lives are going to change but the world got so bad Right? And we got a villain out there who's probably coming back because they kind of left that hokey pokey. Uh, we find out what happens when teenage superhero teams die in this and, and decisions that need to be made. Sounds familiar. I think Marvel did something like this. Um, a lot of this is tropey from, from popular comic book stories already. Our Superman figure in this, right, uh, is getting kind of tired of constantly every day it seems like the same thing it never really stops you know blah 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 that that thing yes bad things happen all the time to stop it is, is not really even sure why that would even be a question of if it should be but i don't know this whole thing was a flashback and a call to action all at the same time and uh i didn't really much get anything out of it if my comic book shop picked up issue two i'm kind of hoping that kind of clarifies a lot of questions i have but for the most part, I, I could do without it. All right, so what's going on in the comic book community? So if you're watching this right now, and uh, it's not 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, <laughs> uh, the video from the Evil Layer Project is going to be on at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, on the 31st today, uh, we're dropping that video uh, a day early because I just dropped off all the packages in the mail. So come by and see what I made for Rob Fat Stacks O Comics and Austin LeMay, two people in our community. Made them something a little special. They're in the mailbox. They are on the way. Seven days. They should be at your location. A uh, couple comic books and something nice. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Also, keep your eyes open because I'm going to be doing a mystery box unboxing from Nick's Kicks and Comics. I picked up one of his mystery boxes. And you've seen me do mystery boxes before. How will this one turn out? You're going to have to swing by and find out. Uh, definitely. Definitely keep your eyes open for that. I'm kind of excited about this one. And we'll definitely talk more about that then. Other than that, guys, I don't have anything else. What did you read this week? What did you think of it? And what did you think about my reviews? Let me know in the comments down below. Love hearing back from you. All right, guys, I got nothing else. Talk to y'all later. Bye.